Hey guys and welcome. Today's collar is going to be an adjustable collar. I will be using a Biothene adapter for that. Um, so I'm having a little bit of fun with this collar today. I had my husband pick out the colors to use for this collar. His birthday is August 15th so I thought it would be kind of cool if he picked out the colors for one of the projects that I do in August. So his favorite color is blue so there's going to be lots of blues. He went through the cord that I had and this is what he came up with. So the colors that I'm going to be using today are Mindbender Electric Blue. Now that is what the Double Cows Hitch is hooked up with and if you're not familiar with that I will leave a link below for you guys to follow along with. I'm also going to be using this electric blue and black hex cord. I have two strands of this dark night blue metallic cord and then I have a uh, 275 cord of electric blue. The first cord that I'm going to add is one of the um, metallic blue cords and what you want to do with this cord is you want to go right in between these two cows hitches. So you're just going to go right through the cows hitches just like that, pull it through to the other side and the middle of the cord. The next cord that I'm going to be adding is the electric blue and black hex and I'm going to just do the same exact thing. I'm just going to go right through these two double cows hitches just like that, pull it through to the other side and to the middle of the cord. The next cord that I'm going to be adding is the the other metallic blue cord and what I want to do with this one is I want to go underneath these two middle stitches right in the center of your two cow's hitches. So you're going to go right into one cow's hitch right th through the middle underneath these two stitches and then up that second cow's hitch just like that. You're going to pull that also to the other side and to the middle. And the last cord is going to be your 275 electric blue and you're going to just do the exact same thing that you just did with the metallic blue. You're just going to go underneath those two middle stitches just like that and pull that through and to the middle. Now that I got all my cords at the top to the middle I decided to roll up my ends and because I'm using two of the metallic cords, what I decided to do is roll up one cord a little bit longer than the other and that's just to help me not get them mixed up. And now we can just get started. Um, I do suggest double checking your measurements just to make sure um, they're where you want them to be. So I'm going to start with my mind bender that is on my right side and I'm going to just go right up the middle and then over that second cord. So I'm going to go underneath this first cord on my right, right up the middle and then over that second cord. I'm going to take my mind bender on the left side now and I'm going to go underneath the cord that I just worked. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go right up the middle, but I'm going to go to the left. Sorry, to the right. Then I'm going to take my metallic blue and the ones that I'm going to be working with first are going to be the longer bundles. And what I want to do is I want to go underneath all of my work right up the middle and then I want to go down this loop 
uh, that I made with the um, mind bender, I want to go right down that loop. Now I'm going to take the one on my left side and I'm going to go underneath everything right up the middle. And I have that loop that I made with the mind bender on the left side and I'm going to go down that loop. The next thing you're going to want to do is find these two horizontal mind bender pieces that are directly in the middle of your work. And you're going to lift them up a little bit. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take our um, hex cord and we're going to go around those two mind bender pieces. So you're going to go over the top and around them and then out the right. So take the one on the right, go over, around them, and to the right. So you're on the right side of the cord that you're working with. Take the one on the left and you're going to do uh, the same thing. You just kind of go out the left. So you're going to take your hex, go over and around those two horizontal pieces, and then out the left side of your cord that you're working with. And you're going to do the same for the metallic. You're just going to grab the one on the right and you're going to go over and around and out the right side. Take the one on the left side and go over and around but to the left. So you're going to go over and around and to the left. And now your um, 275 cord what we're going to do with this is we're going to we're going to crisscross them. So it doesn't matter which way you crisscross them, just make sure that you have it going the same way all the way down your work. So I am just going to put my um, left cord right now over the right and make that cross. Now I'll take the one that I have on my right and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go over and around and to the right. So over, around and to the right. Take the one on the left, go over, around, and to the left, and now you can tighten it up. Once you have it tightened up, we can start the weave all over again. I've noticed with working with the metallic on a collar, it seems to be rough when you're pulling it through, so just be aware of that. I know I made a leash. <laughs> I have used the metallic before. I did make a leash for Sander a couple of years ago. I, I still have it. And um, I didn't feel that roughness as much as I am making the collar. So make sure that you know you got it nice and tight. So we can start again on the right side with the mind bender and we're just going to come right up the middle and then go to the right. You're going to take your mind bender on the left, you're going to go underneath the cord that you just worked and you're going to go right up the middle and then over again towards the right. Now you're going to take that, for me it's the bigger bundle of the metallic and you're going to go underneath your work right up the middle and then down that loop on the right. Now take the one on the left, go underneath, right up the middle, and down that loop on your left side. And now take the hex and find those two horizontal pieces of mind bender. You can lift them up a little bit. You're going to go over and around and you're going to go to the right. Take the one on the left now, go over and around and to the left. Now you're going to take your other metallic and you're going to be on the right and you're just going to go over those two mind bender pieces and around them and to the right. Take the one on the left, go over and around and to the left and now you're at your 275 
and you're going to crisscross them again whichever way you did it. I did my uh, left cord over my right and now I'm going to take my left, sorry, my right cord and I'm just going to go over and around those two horizontal pieces and out to the right. Take the one on the left now, go over and around and to the left and you just tighten it up. Once it's tightened, you're just going to start all over again and you're going to continue doing the same weave all the way down. So I'm going to start with my right mind bender and I'm going to go right up the middle and then over that left cord. Take the cord on my left now and go underneath the cord that I just worked, right up the middle and over the right cord. Next I'm going to take my bigger bundle of the metallic and I'm going to go underneath all my work right up the middle and down that loop on the right. Take the one on my left now, go underneath, right up the middle and down that loop on my left. Find the two mind bender um, horizontal pieces, you can lift them up. You're going to take your hex now and you're going to go over those two cords and around them and out to the right. Take the one on the left now and go over those two mind bender pieces and out to the left. Take your metallic now and go over and around and to the right. Take the one on the left and go over and around and to the left. Now you're going to crisscross your um, 275 cord again, same way you have been. Take the one on the right, go over, around, and to the right. Take the one on the left, go over and around and to the left. And then you can tighten it up. So this is what it's starting to look like and you can see that crisscross pattern that's in the middle and it's all going the same way. You can see how these um, little, these blue uh, metallic pieces are shining through. So I'm going to continue to work this collar and then when I get to the end I'll show you guys how I do the tie off and what it looks like when it's finished with the biothene on. Okay, I am at the end of my collar. I took it off the jig and now we can weave in the top cords. And I am going to start with the uh, hex cord that is on the right side. So you can see I have this gap right here between my work and the two cow's hitches. That's where you're going to end up putting your hex cord on both sides and also your um, metallic cord that is right next to it. So you're just going to take it from the front to the back and you'll do, like I said, the hex cord and the two uh, metallic cords also. Once you have your cords through, um, you're going to want to do your 275 cord next. And what you're going to want to do with that is, you have this really small hole right here, right between the two cow's hitches, and you're going to go through that hole. I'm going to start with my right cord, and I'm going to go through that, that hole. And next, I'm going to take my left cord and I'm going to go on the right side of the cord that I just put in. And the reason for that is it's going to keep that crisscross all the way down to the last stitch. Now that I got all my cords going from the front to the back, I'm going to start to cut and burn. And I'm going to start on my um, sides first. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch or so up from the collar. I'm going to fray them out. I'm going to melt the tops and then I'm going to take a butter knife and I'm going to squish them down. So I'm just going to melt the top and then squish it down. And 
melt the top and then squish that down. I'm going to do the same for the opposite side. Once you have your size done, you're going to want to start um, in the middle. And what I like to do is I'm going to cut one cord at a time, melt it, and squish it down. Um, that way I can hold the other cords out of the way when I'm trying to melt the cord. And I'm just going to start um, with the bottom cords, which are going to be um, my two... Uh, metallic cords. So I'll start with those two and work my way to the other ones. Um, also when you're doing the 275 cord it does burn a little bit faster so be aware I like to cut it just a little bit longer. Um, so here I'm gonna start with the metallic one and I'm just gonna cut that. Fray it out. And I'm going to melt the top. And then squish it down. And like I said, I'll do um, the rest of the cores like that, one at a time. Once you have it all melted, if you want to use the collar the way it is, you can. Um, you just want to hook up your whatever kind of adapter you plan to use. Um, I'm going to make an adapter with this uh, blue bio theme. I think that's going to look really good with it. Um, but you can um, hook it up to whatever you have now. Um, I like to put on Gorilla Glue. I um, use clear non-foaming Gorilla Glue. And I put it on all the ends that I just melted. Um, it does seal it. It's just like a little bit of an extra security that, you know, it won't come apart, I guess. I haven't had anything that I know of come apart. Nobody's ever said anything. So, um, I do do this with my leashes and my collars. You don't have to use a lot. You can just, you know, dab it on and just smear it around with your finger. And then once it's dry, you can put on your adapter. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let this dry for about four or six hours. It does take a little while, um, depending on where you live. And I will put on my Biothene adapter once I make it. And I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done.